Hello, everyone, clinicians. This is Alan uh, and today I'm joined by Dr. Eleni Gagari. Uh, Dr. Gagari, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Dr. Gagari is a board certified oral maxillofacial pathologist and a, uh, um, at the University of Athens, the uh, director of the oral medicine program in the dermatology department. And Dr. Gagari has been kind enough to spend uh, a little bit of time here with us today and maybe do a couple of segments. Uh, the first one, we're going to talk about a case report of a case that I had done a little while ago. And then later on, uh, you're uh, going to share with our viewers some of your um, oral pathology and peripical uh, radiographic as well as histological um, diagnostic things that could be a benefit to um, general dentists and endodontists out there viewing this. Well, uh, Dr. Gagari, uh, you have a lot of experience in the area of oral medicine. Actually, well, we were you know, classmates back in the day over don't the Harvard program. Don't mention the year. Just don't I, say the year. <laughs> we're we're going to keep it, uh, we're going to keep it civil here so we don't age uh, ourselves. But mm -hmm. um, uh, let's get to the, uh, to this uh, case report of, of a patient that I saw several years ago. This was six years ago. And this patient was a 43-year-old female who basically came to our clinic with a chief complaint of uh, pain of long duration in the uh, upper uh, jaw. And what we basically uh, saw this patient had historically uh, a root canal therapy that was done by an endodontist uh, several years, about three years prior to the time that I saw her. And um, she had pain about a year or so prior to that visit. So she'd been in pain for a few uh, years already. And she had the root canal done on a maxillary molar in the area, and the pain kind of persisted. And they basically uh, went through a whole number of diagnostic uh, things, and she was diagnosed with trigeminal neuralgia. She was basically put on uh, uh, various kinds of neurotropic uh, agents, Tegretol, as well as Neurontin oh. and so on, uh, to treat the, the, the pain. Mm -hmm. she, her medical history was basically significant only for that, no other allergies and so on. And so she came to me with the pain in the upper left side for a second opinion to find out what's going on since they had taken CTs and so on. They hadn't been able to diagnose uh, the source of pain. And uh, we took a radiograph, and very clearly it shows that a, radio, a root canal had been performed in the upper left side. You can see the outline of the sinus, but there's also a very atypical kind of a radiolucent lesion, as you can see here. Uh, and we decided uh, to... Um, do another angle a shot, and uh, you know it was pretty clear at that point that there is actually a radiographic lesion uh, that is showing up in the radiolucency, and uh, it didn't quite corroborate with the set of symptoms that. Uh, but, you know, she had already seen people and they said that they hadn't seen anything radiographically. So here it is at a higher magnification, if you will, at the different angle. You can clearly see there is about a little bit of an extrusion of the filling material and the, both of the buccal roots. The palate root doesn't seem to be involved. And so we basically had to make a decision at this point as to what to do with her because it seemed pretty clear that there is a problem. Uh, and since she already had a root canal by an endodontist and very capable endodontist, uh, we decided not to go in there and do a non-surgical retreatment, but rather to go in there surgically and take a look and see what is uh, causing the, the problem. So uh, the first thing we did was to raise a flap, and as you can see very quickly on this uh, in this tooth after raising the flap, a very clear uh, you know area of uh, bony dehiscence is apparent, and uh, there was a little bit of an indurated, not very soft, but. Uh, but not also too hard of a, uh, of a lesion in that area. So one of the things that I tried to do uh, is to try to remove the lesion as intact as possible in these kinds of cases. It's important, as you know, to get a di uh, to send these things in for a biopsy. So I basically tried to cure it around it uh, and back out the lesion. Uh, and uh, you can see that we kind of managed to get that out that's, intact in that's one That's a piece. great job. Uh, just to yeah. make a note, it looks yeah. yellowish. Uh, and is that mm -hmm. a true finding? Did you see it to be yellow? Yeah, absolutely. It was yellowish, um, you know, on a typical kind of a lesion that we end up seeing uh, with a granuloma, mm -hmm. it doesn't tend to be as yellowish, you know, unless you have some kind of, you know, uh, something else going on. Uh, most of the time with the larger lesions, you may have, uh, you know, you may have cholesterol clefts and things like that. It could be cystic in nature, but it doesn't quite feel the same way, which is part of the reason why we send this out for biopsy. So this is the lesion mm -hmm. and we sent it out for biopsy. And uh, this is your domain here. Uh, 
Well, well, what do we see here? We see a beautiful uh, histologic picture of uh, actinomyces with the so-called splendor Hepley phenomenon of the radiation, and that's a sulfur granule. Congratulations! Sulfur granule. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately for the patient, the sulfur granule uh, and the lesion in this area means that you know histologically the the, the diagnosis of an actinomycosis was made, and these. Uh, Entities obviously are of concern to us as endodontists since treating infections because they're highly resistant to uh, a lot of the treatments that we kind of deal with. So um, actinomyces reali is the, the, you know, it's the prime um, kind of candidate in these types of uh, lesions, but it's present in most endodontic infections, correct? Correct. So it's present in almost all endodontic, you know, all endodontic infections are polymicrobial and usually mixed, but... Uh, actinomyces species are oftentimes present, and they're one of the ones that are really difficult to get rid of. And uh, that's where the use of the uh, sodium hypochlorite, full-strength hypochlorite uh, bleach, basically, household bleach, has been shown to be effective against these types of um, bacteria. But when they start forming biofilm, then it's more difficult to get mm. to them. But before we get on to how we treated this case, can you just uh, give us uh, a little bit of background here about actinomyces? This is basically what we see most of the time with actinomyces. This is a typical patient, correct? Well, yes. The key thing here to remember is that actinomycosis and actinomyces is not a fungal infection, just as you said. It's a bacterial infection. Actinomycetes are uh, anaerobic gram-positive microorganisms, and they require antibiotic treatment. In the surgical facial area, we tend to see them in exactly the setting that you mentioned, a periapical lesion uh, related to uh, a carious tooth, an abscess tooth. This is the most common scenario. We can have it to be related with trauma or um, some other place of surgery without a tooth-related uh, scenario there. It's less common. Mm -hmm. So this is a case that we see, and it's a periapical lesion. It makes a fistula very quickly. Yeah. It seems to spread as an infection uh, quite quickly and create a lot of pain for the patient. In the U.S., these things are often associated with farmland. You know, farmers and so on end up getting a mm -hmm. lot more of these infections. Is there any correlation, or is it just coincidence? I don't think that we have any really good study showing mm -hmm. what the situation is. Uh, what we see them correlating with are... Teeth that have been ignored for a long time, misdiagnosed or ignored, or just plain poor oral hygiene that has resulted in wide carious lesions all over the place. So um, I do think it's more common in older patients, but, you know, there are no strict uh, guidelines on this. Mm -hmm. So this is another example of the kinds of actinomyces infections that we end up seeing. Yeah. Uh, one thing to remember is that what you read in the books usually are the extensive lesions, the lesions that end up with an osteomyelitis kind of uh, look, extensive throughout the jaw. However, in a good number of cases, we have what you had here, mm -hmm. a more well-demarcated, um, localized kind of mm -hmm. lesion, such as the one you see here. And we can discuss about um, case selection and, and treatment here, because that's a different look and a different patient from the one that has very extensive actinomycosis of the jaw. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just to make a note here that actinomycosis can exist in other parts of the body and it's a very serious disease in, let's say, areas like the abdomen or the pelvic area. That's true. These, uh, these bugs can end up anywhere, but you see uh -huh. them a lot in oral And also, patients. one more thing, notice the yellowish tinge here as well. It's the sulfur granules, sulfur granules that give the yellowish look to your case as well as to, the, to these cases. Terrific.